Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I want to take another look at this defensive shield effect. So because I've already done a tutorial on this, I'm not going to be building the whole thing again from scratch. And really this time I just want to focus on creating a 3D displace for the impacts. And I'll link to my previous tutorial in the description if you want to go and check out more about this project. So here we are in Resolve and the first thing I want to do is right click and create a new Fusion composition. Let's call it Tutorial. Let's have a duration of 10 seconds and a frame rate of 24. So create, let's double click that to open up Fusion. So let's delete that. I'm going to come to File and Import and Fusion Composition, and I'm going to navigate to this project here that I'll give you a link to in the description. So open that up and we get this. So let's just have a look at the final output there. Just want to mention very quickly that I've got some materials here, this blin, which is the material for the shield. Now it's using an image map called Scratch Glass Tiled UHD. I'll give you a link to that just in case this media in hasn't found it. And you'll need to bring it in from your media pool, wherever you've put it like that, and just pipe it into those inputs there. So there we are. We've got more material here. We've got our scene geometry and we've got the shield and some various bits and pieces there. Uh, down here, we've got our camera stuff. We've got some generic lights there and we've got a renderer and we're rendering over a background. So let's hide all that and let's get going. And what we'll be doing in this tutorial is creating an impact that creates a true 3D displacement and we'll be linking it all up procedurally. So the first thing I want to do is to create a spotlight that will create the light for the hit. So let's just add a spotlight like that. Let's make it a little bit yellow and let's set the decay type to linear and bring the decay rate down to around 0.5. And then I'm going to set its position to two on Z. And that's to allow for the radius of the shield, which is, as you can see, 1.5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a 3D merge after this, like so. And then let's bring that 3D merge into here. And what we need to do is we need to turn on pass through lights, because otherwise you notice that we didn't see that spotlight. So with this merge, I'm going to be creating the positioner for the impact. So I'm going to call it a pause just in case we wanted to make an extra one. So a and I'm also going to call this spotlight a spot. And now you'll notice that if I come to my a positioner and we rotate. We can rotate it all the way around the sphere like that up and down on X. So let's just actually just set up that light a little bit more. Let's come to here and reduce the cone angle, but in, increase the penumbra angle. So we've got a little bit of a softness like that. And maybe actually just reduce that decay rate even more. So we've got a nice bright hotspot there. Let's now create the displace map. So first of all, let's add a background node. And what I want to do is I want to make this two by one so it'll map correctly onto our sphere. So 2000 by 1000. And I'll always forget to do this because I'm not used to working in Resolve. You do need to turn off auto resolution in order to be able to put in the numbers that you want. So 2000 by 1000. Then we're going to add a fast noise. We've got a merge. That's good. We're going to come back to the fast noise. We're going to come to the image size, turn off auto resolution and again set this to 2000 by 1000. So that looks like this over here, uh, 1000, not 100. So then to this merge, we're going to add a circular mask or an elliptical mask, whatever you want to call it, this one here. So there we are. And here in the ellipse controls, I'm just going to add an expression to the height and pick up the width so that we can just adjust the width without having to adjust the height as well. So let's set that value to something like 0 0.05. So now we need to somehow link the position of this elliptical mask to the position of the light or rather the rotation of the light. So we're going to do that by first of all publishing these X and Y rotations on our A positioner. 
not on the light, but on the A positioner here. So publish the X and publish the Y. And then we can come to our ellipse. And what I want to do is I want to add an expression to the center or rather modify the center with an expression. So modify with expression. And then let's come over to the modifiers tab here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect number one and number two to the Y and the X positions of my positioner. So connect to, as I say, first of all, the Y and second, the X like that. And you can see those values have popped in there. That, that's good. So then what I want to do is modify these two values so that this actually tracks the rotation. So I'm going to add an expression to number three, and that's going to be N1 divided by 360 plus 0.5. And then I'm also going to add an expression to number four. So add an expression, and that's going to be N2 divided by negative 180 plus 0.5. Then what we can do is we can come to the point out tab here and we can use N3 for the X and N4 for the Y. So now if we adjust our positioner, you can see that we're adjusting the position of the ellipse with our rotation controls. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a 3D displace, displace 3D. We're going to drop it in here after the shield and we're going to take our merge output into the input of the displace. And now you can see we've got this crazy displace. Now we don't actually want a scale of positive one. We actually want a scale of negative 0.1 like that. So it's going inwards. Negative scale will go inwards. Positive goes outwards. So let's just test this. So if we go around here, yeah, it's all looking pretty good. Let's go up and down on X. Now, what I want you to notice is that we can go round the back of the sphere. So I'm going round negative and we're going round the back of the sphere and we can go the other way as well. However, if I go beyond 180, I'm going to start to lose my displace, as you can see, because my little ellipse is going off the end of my texture there. So that is a limitation. You can't go beyond 180 with this, but I think that's probably good enough for most purposes. We are getting around the back of the sphere as we would like to be able to do. Now let's just look at a little, few more details. We want a softer edge to that ellipse. So let's come to here and just soften it off just a little bit like that. We only want a tiny amount, so 0 0.01 is probably too much, so 0 0.005 like that. And then we can come into our fast noise as well, the noise tab here, and maybe just play with the scale so we get a little bit of detail in there. Bring it up to maybe, I don't know, 10, 15, something like that. And you can see our ellipse here has got some detail in it, and we can increase that by just adjusting the contrast. So as we're doing that, we're sort of getting a more interesting indentation there. So that is the effect, but how are we going to control it as an actual hit? So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this spot itself, and I'm going to publish that intensity value. And so then I can come back to my ellipse here, and I can connect the level of the ellipse to the A spot intensity, like so. So if we come to the A spot and we adjust the intensity, we will get the hit happening like that. And I just want to point out a couple of things, one of which is that in order to get it to look right, I have had to rotate the sphere here through 90 degrees. Otherwise, the positions are going to look wrong because of the way we expect it to be. We expect sort of zero to be in the middle, but we actually need to rotate it through 90 degrees because of the way the shield is mapped. And the other thing I'm going to do is after that displace, because I don't like the way we're seeing this mirroring on the texture, I'm just going to add a UV map, set it to spherical, and I'm going to come into the rotation and I'm going to set that Y rotation to 120. And you can see well, I can do whatever I want with it, but I can just get the texture of the glass texture where I want it to be. I 
uh, I didn't like the zero position. That's why I'm doing this. Quite a useful thing to be able to do. And it's not actually affecting anything else other than, than the, the glass texture. It's not affecting what we're doing with this displacement. And I think that's basically it. Lots we could we could play around with. I'm still not really sure that we've got this light correct. Maybe just more penumbra angle. We could even go really quite far with that. Maybe this ellipse soft edge could actually do with a little bit more softness. Anyway, loads you can do. So, of course, I made a very silly mistake earlier on. And the result was that, as I claimed, we couldn't go past 180 in either direction like that. Otherwise, otherwise we would lose our displace map because this little chap would run off the edge of the texture. But actually, there's a completely different way of doing it. So I shouldn't have had this expression on the center of the elliptical mask. So let's remove that and then reset these both to 0.5. And this ellipse actually needs to go into the fast noise so that we actually mask the fast noise. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate or rather link the center of this merge. So if I right click and modify with expression, we need to do the same things we did before here. For number one, we're going to connect it to a pos y rotation. For number two, we're going to connect it to a pos x rotation. We're going to add an expression to number three, and that's going to be n1 divided by 360 plus 0.5. And then we need to add an expression to number four, and this is going to be n2 divided by negative 180 plus 0.5. And then we need to come over to the point out, set the X to N3 and the Y to N4. And the only other thing I need to do is come to the merge and the edges. And if we choose wrap instead of the default of canvas, and we now come back to our A position and we rotate around, we actually get, we can continue on forever because as you can see over on the left, when we hit the edge of the screen, we start again from the other side. So there you go. That's the simple answer to that problem. And sorry for not spotting it earlier. So I hope you have fun playing with that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.